2005 first robotics competition game, Reefscape. The game is essentially a pick and place game with some other aspects to it. What surprised me the most was the hanging element. This one can definitely wreck a robot if you hit it the wrong way. There's two game elements. There's coral, which is a PVC pipe. You can either score the coral on four different levels. So the second game piece was basically these giant kickballs. Or you can score the algae into the processor and have the human player throw it up, or you, as the robot, can throw it up into like this higher level called the barge. There's a lot of things involved in it, and something that like, really excited me was the, the amount of strategy involved in it. I think the final kicker was, again, that climb, where everybody was just shocked. So our team, we do this thing called FFFD, Frog Force Function Deployment. Basically, we decide what are the main functions we want a robot to have. First, we brainstorm. We go over the rules of the game. We find out what we really want to pay attention to. We watch the video. Immediately after, we take it, we sit down, and we have everybody just look through the game manual. We all go through the game manual, and then we split up into subgroups. Okay. Well, okay. Read this when you get home, reread it again. When you come back, you should have that game manual memorized. And then we go from there. So we have a whole meeting where we're like, this we value more than this. And then that's where we start to come up with the designs to prototype. So then we break into subgroups and we'll like each prototype a certain thing. First, we focus on the what. Like, what functions do we need to have, right? And then the next day, on Sunday, we check how do we want to accomplish this, right? Do we want a grabber mechanism? Do we want some rollers? How are we going to do it? What's a easy way to do it, right? We split off that game manual into different groups in the room, and we say, okay, you analyze this portion, you analyze this portion, you analyze this portion, so we can all compile it, present it together without having to spend ages on each thing. We'll go over what we want, what we need, and what would be nice to have. We split up into different groups, which is such as Teleop, Auton, um, end game, strategy, everything that is game specific and people from like business groups and build groups that don't have anything to do with the robot, they all combine into mixed groups and then they just talk about what they think and then they're able to rank everything. One of the biggest challenges this year with the game is going to be a lot on cooperating with our opponents. I think this game has like a lot of nuances to it, so there's like a lot of strategy to be played. What are we allowed to do? What aren't we allowed to do? What things do we want to prioritize when we're picking up? What goals do we want to accomplish? Do we want to do the highest scoring thing? Do we think that that's too much? Do we want to just go through the, go for the little scoring? You're not always going to have the answer and it's okay. It's okay not to have the answer. Rely on your resources. Use the resources you have. Use, rely on your partner. Rely on somebody you might not want to rely on, you know, and, and create that collaboration. We have a lot of great people with a lot of very strong opinions. Other people do get into a bit of a, uh, not necessarily an argument, but like a little debate on which is better for us and which is not. Like, we don't always agree on stuff, but if we do come up on a conflict, um, we usually talk it out with each other and find the best strategy. They're learning to work with others that may not know as much as them, but they all collaborate and work together. What we try to do is we try to let like, all the new members, we try to like, have everybody have a voice. We want to make sure that no voices are lost and that everybody has something to contribute. No ideas entirely ignored, but it's always that culture of like, um, building on and adding upon ideas. Very quickly, we get more ideas than we could ever build, right? So then we go through a process of taking those ideas and ranking them. So there's usually some sort of data-driven decision-making behind that. So you take a step back, analyze the problem, evaluate the pros and cons for each solution. As a mentor, you basically have to encourage them to go through that whole process and not just try and keep butting heads trying to be like, this is my idea, mine's better. Um, have them take a step back, evaluate, really consider all the options and make sure that they pick the right one. I think a lot of teams have different ideas and there's different ways that we can go about the challenge, which is kind of the beauty of FIRST. For the first three weeks, generally, we basically have kids break up into groups and we make five or six end effectors. We make four or five climbers. You know, the programmers work on their stuff. And basically it's, you know, 
make it fail. On day two, we come together as a team again, and then we all write down our ideas. We all have ideas on sticky notes that we submit. And then we have some people who like try to interpret it and try to understand what everybody's saying. And then from there, the game spec group can take those ideas and then put it all together to make the robot. <laughs> We do a whole showcase where we're like, this is what our prototype is doing and this is what our prototype does. And then we ask the hard questions like, you know, how does that fail? How does that integrate with the next system? What happens if this? What happens if that? So it's trying to figure out what ways would work the best, how it would work with other mechanisms, and how can we make our drivers' lives easier. And it really gets the kids thinking, you know, when they see something fail, then someone from another group might run and jump in and say, well, what if you do this? They're learning to work under pressure. The biggest thing that's always on my mind is this time aspect. Like, we gotta get through this. There's no dawdling time. 